Hi there. I just wanted to do a short video about the inflation of items I'm seeing on YouTube and it's been getting worse. I think a lot of it is obviously due to the um, to the pandemic and also um, the fact that the generation of people that would be interested in this are getting older and now they're starting to seek out items um, so that's people who are generation x generation is it z the next one <laughs> um so that yeah so really anyone who's kind of born from 1965 maybe up to 1980 or so um or a little bit older so i just thought i'd look at the uh, sole prices of, of some of these things and uh, it, it just seems crazy so this is obviously from a uk viewpoint and uh, we've got a uh, Sony TPS L2 which is the iconic uh, first ever proper kind of Walkman and um, you can see it's kind of pushing in a lot of places um, 400 pounds I mean some people are paying um, a lot less the, the, there's one here 195 um, broken parts only so um, they might be getting a bargain but um, anyone really buying at this sort of uh, price range um, you know needs to know what they're doing essentially I guess a lot of them are being sold for parts so that you can make maybe one good one from a couple of rogue ones um, so uh, I thought that was quite interesting also um, there's a Walkman that came after that which is uh, WM3 which happens to be a um, an updated version a metal um, compatible version so metal tape chrome tape um, etc so these these are kind of varying a little bit but I'm um, still pushing um, some crazy prices and you're wondering um, who is actually paying these prices and if it looks like these things are completing so we've got one here 500 pounds um, let's scroll down not many for sale or going through um, in this country. <laughs> Perhaps I should have looked for a different model, but no, I mean I'm, I am seeing um, the WM3 sort of pushing some high high prices um, in in a similar way to the TPS L2. And only maybe a couple of years ago, this this Walkman would have been um, one tenth of that price, or maybe one twentieth of that price. So um, yeah, it is quite. It's quite amusing um, the other thing I think that's going on is um, we have this um, thing with eBay so when people list things if they get the model numbers right then eBay will suggest a price point to list that item and I think what it's doing is it's obviously inflating um, the starting place and maybe the um, the buy it now um, price as well so um, as you can see this this item here is going for quite a lot of money although there was a lot of them um, made so that there should be quite a few out there um, and some people are sort of paying paying through the odds I would say on the um, on the WM2 um, so as a can let's have a look at AWAR so AWAR personal stereos so these unfortunately a lot of these didn't last um, because of capacitor issues and that was around the early 90s um, so the really nice sleek looking machines tended to have issues so you don't see um, those for sale in working condition normally um, so this this one at the top here the p202 is probably just before that time and um, before they started to use some rogue capacitors and a lot of these as you can see are very kind of um, what's the word not mundane but uh, basic models that any manufacturer could have uh, put out really and stuck their name on so nothing special there um, there's one there that would probably be okay so there's the G35 a bit bulkier but that's um, from before the 90s I think let's scroll down yeah, so we're not seeing a lot of high-end AWARs at all. So if someone's good with a soldering iron and uh, can source some new capacitors, then 
um, you could probably make a bit of a killing from trying to get old, really old AWARS from the 90s to work. Um, I'm just not seeing any in this uh, sold list here. Oh, here's one here. So here's a really nice one. Would have been probably £50 back in 1990 or so, and um, it's sold very cheaply. Uh, basically, it, it, it would be probably very hard to fix that um, unless you were some sort of specialist. Okay. So that's there you are. So by looking at that, I think we can say that Sony's are. Uh, pretty well in demand there and um, probably goes for mini disc as well so let's um, let's go to mini disc and see what some of these sold prices are okay so we move on to mini disc here and uh, we'll do a comparison so we're looking at the Sony mini disc players and this is quite a popular model this is an MZN10 it's got a proprietary battery which unfortunately can go bad and um, they are quite expensive to find. It's also got um, a similar thing with the lead. Um, so basically for USB transfers, you do need the proper um, cradle or you can adapt, I think, the, um, the NH1 cradle um, to work. So um, yeah, as you can see, the, the, these tend to go for quite high money. Um, they're probably going for double uh, what they were going for at least I would say um, from um, a year or two ago so um, this one's in working order okay let's try let's try another one let's try the I went to that one yet we'll do the we'll do the original um, Sony mini disc player so the original one it's quite bulky quite heavy it wasn't really um, popular for Quite a long time um, but recently it's looking like um, one's in good condition with all the bits they're starting to sell quite quite a lot of money so um, you know they've got ones that are part parts only sort of going for 50 pounds or so 60 pounds and then <laughs> there you go 161 there um, 171 it's a lot without power off on there so maybe something wrong there but 92 pounds so again the prices are creeping up on these and um, the more they sell for the more eBay will be pushing to sell or list these at higher prices um, so let's also have a look now at um, another one which was quite specialized it was a sports style uh, mini display so again a standard mini display um, these are starting to um, be quite popular um, so yeah sort of selling quite good money some of them aren't so much probably maybe down to scratches and things um, maybe there's more of them in America so the prices are um, a little bit cheaper in America but over here in good old Britain they're um, they are yeah they're starting to push some silly money there okay so for the really silly ones let's go for the um, sony rh1 which everyone will know is the high-end mini disc player um, not without some problems i would say so let's have a look so there we go this is the ba battery i was talking about so <laughs> the battery which is used in a few devices is yeah quite a lot of money 60 pounds um, so these have been fetching quite a lot of money over the years sort of around maybe 200 pounds and then jumped to sort of 300 pounds um, now they're kind of pushing pushing beyond that if you've got all the information you know if you've got a box um, booklet etc they're, they're fetching quite a lot of money some people seem to be paying crazy money um, the OLED displays tend to go faint on these as well so um, that's something else to worry about but yeah they're quite expensive as you can see and then um, there's a cheaper um, silver version which is quite popular um, this one here so this one again is um, yeah 100 odd pounds there 200 pounds there 181 to 279 so for old tech it must be collectors really parts only almost 60 pounds who would pay 60 pounds for something 
broken. With these mini discs, there's probably a good chance you wouldn't get them working. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of money. Okay, so let's move on to another type of thing now. Um, quite interested in looking at camcorders. So looking at camcorders here, um, you, know, you would have thought DV camcorders and the alike would be really out of fashion now. Um, now, admittedly, this isn't a proper consumer one. It's kind of a semi-consumer, semi-pro type camera, um, but it's still fetching reasonable money considering, um, you know, they're very old now. Um, the nice thing about the XM2 is the, uh, the lens and the actual recording quality for standard definition um, is very, very good and very pleasing to, to the eye. But unfortunately, um, they do have issues with the um, with the me with the mechanisms of the uh, cassettes. And also, I've I've got a camera that's got um, some mold inside the lens itself, which is a shame because that shows up on brighter days. So, um, yeah, it'd be nice to get perhaps a um, one that was in a bit of a state that wouldn't work and then just swap the um, swap the lens over so um, I don't know if that would be an easy thing to do or not but as you can see for old tech going for quite high prices really okay um, so moving on from there let's go to um, HDV uh, DV cameras and you, again you'd think that there wouldn't be much of a market for these because they're recording to tape um, and um, it's not quite full HD um, the HTV format so um, again you know high, high prices um, I would say yeah that is a 41 there 134 pound 300 and something for one there near mint but um, these sort of prices are starting to eat into some of the real modern Sony cameras that, um, that are 4k so I don't know why you would pay um, over 300 pounds or something like that Okay, so moving on to the um, sort of retro Canon uh, cameras. So people will be aware of the um, XL1, XL2 range of camcorders. So these are really just collectible. I can't imagine anyone uh, being outside filming with these. Um, let me know if you do know anyone. But um, as you can see, um, the ones that aren't parts only are fetching um, quite a lot of money still. Um, some are actually fetching quite low money. Well, this one there that, yeah, was fetching £71. Maybe that did have something wrong with it. So, um, but as you can see, the average is, um, is sort of pushing £200, which seems a lot of money. Seems a lot of money. And let's have a look at the XL2 Canon. And that is probably going to fetch a little bit more, probably a little bit rarer. Um, there doesn't seem to be much sold in Britain particularly um, we've got a German one there well, they're for sale now actually so that's um let's just see if I can um, scroll down so now I'm going to look at the XL2 Canon um, and see um, see how much these went for so um, again yeah Quite high prices, not a huge amount of stock in, in this country by the looks of it. Probably more more in the States. Yeah, maybe less well known. Okay, there's one that went for 400. Wow, that's a lot isn't it? Okay, so um, moving, moving on a little bit um, to the pro um, sort of end. But again, being... Um, being old tech, so this is um, sorry, I've already done Canon. I wanted to do um, the Panasonic um, camera, which is this. Okay, so the, the Panasonic one, parts only. Well, there was two, 205, um, 584, 885, 449. So the thing with these cameras is they can record standard definition to tape but not to the um, memory card the p2 memory cards now the p2 memory cards will allow the hd um, 
so that's um, the 1080i, um, the 720 p to be recorded but um, fortunately those cards are very expensive um, so whoever's buying these cameras have already got a bunch of those cards um, who knows but yeah this is quite shocking because these sort of prices you would have thought um, you would have just gone out and got a um, 4k modern camera um, but um, maybe maybe it's the global shutter um, sort of CCD people like um, yeah who knows let me know what you think but you can see that the price of a lot of these things um, yeah is is interesting to say the least so here we have um, now moving on to um, game consoles and um, old computers and um, yeah the Atari Jaguar you could not give away um, not long after it came out actually there was a shop um, was it game I think that might have been selling them very very cheap I mean maybe 20 pounds if that um, so now they're starting to command some crazy money as you can see um, so um, yeah there's a lot of collectors out there and a lot of money floating about so that's the Atari Jaguar um, let's have a look at one more thing let's have a look at an old computer um, so these Auric computers um, again they were quite um, they were quite cheap and um, now they're kind of fetching quite high prices again so um, yeah 170 for one there um, 80 pounds 155 70 pounds parts only okay 85 spares or repair so yeah they're um, they're fetching quite quite high money so who's paying for all this Where's the money coming from? I think what's happening is um, we've had the pandemic, we're having it now. Um, there's been a lot of people probably saving money um, as, a, as, as against people who have kind of lost their jobs and um, are really struggling. So we've got a bit of a divide there and I think there's a lot of um, sort of cash floating about. There's probably a limited supply of things as well because if a lot of activities are kind of shut down then um, the only channel for selling and for buying and selling becomes sort of like eBay um, and these online uh, sites um, so um, and you're not even well you're not really supposed to travel to places to you know to buy things and pick them up and stuff so um, it's all got to be done by post and I think um, yeah I think it's a combination of things so like I said a bit earlier on I think there's a combination of a certain generation of people that now have a bit more money and they have an interest in something that they owned when they were young so there's that side of things as the pandemic is maybe allowing people to spend a bit more on this stuff that, that they would have spent on holidays and other activities and um, so I think that's that's a definite case um, and I think as well it's, it's all going to be a cycle in um, a few years from now probably looking at maybe 10 or 15 years from now I would say that a lot of this stuff um, will not be so sought after because there'll be a whole generation that won't have known anything about it particularly um, and why would they collect things um, particularly electronic things very hard to keep things going um, you all, all, almost always got to be using it so um, so yeah and I think the I think one of the next things that might be collectible is some high-end CD players so um, basically the standard hi-fi um, CD players like separates um, and also some high-end um, portable devices I think they will become probably more expensive because I, I, I think we probably will have a full shift of, um, of people wanting to kind of move from vinyl into CD and um, yeah vinyl is going to always be there it's always going to um, you know it's got a real kind of standing and um, appreciation but I think um, I think CDs will make a bit of a comeback as well um, 
So yes, that's just my opinions. Anyone like to uh, add some comments and um, maybe explain to me what they think is happening? Thank you very much. And um, if you'd like to subscribe and like the video, then I know to produce some others and maybe carry on on this subject in the future. Thank you very much then. Bye-bye for now.